Hi, this is Joe from Kayak in the Buzzards Bay Area. Um, just a little thing, uh, the last two videos I posted were from my trip at the end of last month in Casco Bay in Maine. Uh, me and a friend of mine, John Taylor, made the trip. Uh, I'm in the orange kayak, he's in the blue and yellow one. Um, what I'd like to talk about his trip is we started out on Herman Island uh, campground. Uh, we stayed there Friday night. Uh, set up camp next to the boat ramp, uh, hike through around the island, nice place for a hike. Uh, we saw deer and uh, sorted birds and other wildlife uh, on the island, some great views. Uh, I took a lot of pictures um, from the island, um, just out across the bay and, and everything at other islands, uh, really nice place. Um, the next morning we got up, had breakfast, packed the kayaks, listened to the weather report, uh, things sounded really good. <clears throat> I had plotted the course previously. I had bought the chart for Casco Bay. Uh, we knew where we were going. I had uh, compass readings and, and uh, channel markers uh, for the whole trip. So we started out, it was about a five and a half mile paddle to get to Raspberry Island, which is just on the northwest corner of Yarmouth Island. Um, we got as far as Bear Island. There's a big notch in Bear Island. It's a good, great place to go in and rest. Um, a lot of trash in there from the from the water and stuff. It's a very primitive island and it's privately owned. So don't go exploring the island. Uh, you know, respect the uh, owners of the island. And, uh, and then we had a little boat traffic crossing over the river by Cundy Harbor. Um, that wasn't too bad. Um, we just made our way along the, the coastline. We're about 100, maybe 200 feet offshore most of the time. And uh, we kind of overshot the turn on the other side of Yarmouth Island because uh, nautical charts don't really show the land all that well. And uh, it's showing it at low tide. We, we were coming into an extreme low tide, so things looked a little funky according to the chart. And we wound up at gunpoint. And yes, real men do ask directions. Uh, we got directions back to where we wanted to go, and we made it to Raspberry Island. Of course, we made it to Raspberry at extreme low tide. The tide was uh, a number of feet below normal due to the supermoon, and uh, it made the hike up into the into the woods real fun. Uh, unload the kayaks and then carrying them up. Uh, the rocks are smoothed over from the tide going in and out for, you know, eons and a lot of uh, slippery kelp attached to these rocks. So uh, made that a little fun. But we set up camp. We had a good time. Uh, next day when we got up, the game plan was to paddle five miles to Bailey Island and uh, have lunch at a place called Morris's Crib Stone Grill, uh, which I hear is an excellent place. One day I'll have to go back there and, and try it out. But uh, we made it as far as gunpoint again and was looking at the open stretch to get to uh, or Orwell Island. And it was kind of choppy and the wind was against us and we were thinking about the trip back. So we decided to uh, basically regroup and stay, uh, stay close to Raspberry. So we decided that we were going to go up and um, try to find a little snow island, which was the other island that we could have camped on. Uh, we're both part of the Main Island Trail Association, so according to their catalog, that's that, that was the islands we could camp on in that area. On the way up, we ran into a family that was out kayaking, and the husband was gracious enough to take us almost all the way to Little Snow. Uh, had some great conversations with them, thanked them a lot. Um, never made it to Little Snow. We went to another island, re-listened to the marine forecast. Uh, conditions were getting a little bit worse, not too much, uh, but the forecast was one to three feet, uh, five mile an hour winds. Supposed to stay that way till noon the next day and then get extremely worse. So at that point, we decided uh, we, we're not going to stick around for the next day. Our best bet was to uh, pack and run that day. So we went back to Raspberry Island, broke camp, packed it up to kayaks. Luckily, it was high tide, much easier to, to get in and launch. Um, and then we had two game plans and a promise. Our promise was failure is not an option on this trip. And the two game plans was to follow the coastline, um, 
back the way we came, uh, maybe staying only 100 feet offshore. And um, and then if things got progressively worse, we were going to turn into Cundy Harbor, get somebody to give him John a ride back to his car. I was going to stay with the boats till he could come back and pick me up. So we come around Yarmouth Island. There was a, a couple of shoals and, and sort of a little island that was given some protection. There were some lobstermen in there. We hailed them down and told them we'd pay them uh, if they took our kayaks on board and took us back to Hermit Island. Uh, they decided not to. Uh, we thanked them and we just kept paddling. Uh, we got up uh, almost to Cundy Harbor. We found a nice, uh, nice cove, well protected. Went in there. I had to uh, bail out my kayak and uh, had a sandwich, uh, something to drink. John, John had a snack. And he hydrated. Um, good thing we did because that was the last chance we got to hydrate till we got to the mainland on the other side. Uh, Coming out of this cove, there was a little island, and we decided we we're going to go around the back side of the island where it was protected. And then when we got to the other side, we were supposed to make a left-hand turn into the river and go up to Gandhi Harbor. However, while sitting there resting and everything, the seas had gone from, well, on the way to this cove, the seas went from 1 to 3 to 3 to 4, heading to 5. Coming out of this cove, going around the back side of the island, when we hit the other side, now we're in the five and six, uh, sometimes seven. So the conditions were getting worse. The wind was picking up. Um, according to the little pendant on my on my light stand, which I had going, um, we were figuring it's about a 10, 12 mile an hour wind. Um, so because of the frequency of the waves and the, and, the, and the height of the waves, we couldn't make a left turn. Both of us would have rolled over at that point. We couldn't be, I mean, I'm loaded with 70 pounds of gear. He's loaded with 80. There's no way we could have got either kayak, even going into a brace turn, to turn fast enough to, to make the turn to get into the river. So we decided that we just, uh, we were trying to ride the waves on a 10 to 30 degree angle so you could go up and over instead of trying to fight them head on and getting flooded. And uh, so the game plan was just to stay on that 10 to 30 degree into the waves and um, just go to the mainland. Uh, I didn't find out later till after we had gotten home and I'd actually got out the chart and figured where we had landed and stuff. It was uh, two nautical miles. Um, it was quite the trip. Uh, the farther we went along this line, the worse it got. We went from six to seven to eight to nine. Um, at one point, I'm going up a wave like this in my 14-foot kayak and realize here's the top of the wave, here's the trough of the wave, and that's 14 feet. It's not, that doesn't give you a warm and fuzzy feeling when you're out there in the middle. And uh, the thing we had to do was uh, stay calm, not panic. Um, we were doing fine. We were getting over the ways. We weren't getting flooded. Uh, I took on a little bit of water here and there. Uh, usually it was the top of a little, uh, little bit of chop on top of the wave. would sit there and hit the side of the kayak because I was running low in the water. It'd go over my, my cummy and hit me in the ribs. Um, but I had an electric bilge pump, and I had it connected. Uh, I don't know if it ever worked. I never saw it uh, discharged, but I was just glad it was there. Um, but we kept going. Uh, the wind went from about 10 miles an hour up to steady 15, 16, uh, gusting 20 to 30. The waves, like I said, out in the middle were up around 14 feet. Um, you know, but like I said, we kept our head, we kept going. Both of us have been around the ocean all our life. We've both been in rough water. Uh, it's a little bit different than a kayak. And the reason you need to keep going slow with just enough forward motion to get you up over the waves is because you're looking at land and you think if you speed up, you'll get there faster. Uh, the distance when you're that low to the water looking at a fixed point is not as close as you really think it is. So the thing is, is we had to sit there and go slow, steady paddle. You know, no, no high bracing. We did it. We did a low arc paddle, and just kept going and 
keeping with that slow paddle and just making forward progress. Um, we're still not sure how we did it, but it was five and a half hours to get to Raspberry. It only took us three hours to get to where we landed, which was only about three quarters of a mile from Hermit Island. And we can't, for the life of us fighting wind and waves, figure out how we saved that much time. Uh, <laughs> we like to tell people it was a wormhole. Um, we don't know. We, 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 it's, it's just, we can't figure it out. But uh, the thing I want to say is, is that when you're, when you're out in conditions like that, have a marine radio, constantly listen to your weather forecast, have alternate plans, uh, and then stick to the plans, help each other out, you know, keep each other under control. Um, yeah, you want to make a mad dash for it, but don't. You'll sit there and you'll, you'll spend all your energy and you're not going to make it. Um, the other thing in fighting waves like that, wind and waves like that, you really don't have time to reach down and grab your marine radio and start screaming mayday. Um, you're, you'll wind up in worse conditions. So we just said, you know, like, just keep going. Um, we had all the safety gear that you wanted to think of. I carry a, a 50 foot tow line, a 55 foot throw line. I got a personal location beacon. I've got a marine radio. John's got a marine radio. I got a t titanium survival knife. I've got a signal mirror. I've got a strobe light over my left shoulder. John's got one over his left shoulder. Uh, I mean, we we're rigged for it. I mean, it, not denying. I mean, we had all the all the equipment that we needed. It's just the conditions just came up on us, and it, it, we had no other choice. So, uh, I guess the whole motto or moral of this whole uh, video here is. You know, stay aware. Stay aware of the weather. Stay aware of the surroundings. Uh, have a chart. You know, plot it. Plot out your chart. You know, your course in and out. Uh, you know, know all your navigational aids. Your your cans. Your your beacons. Your your nuns. Uh, whether they're flashing or whether they're ringing. Uh, you know, and how to identify them. You know, have all that in under your belt before you even take the trip. Um, I had I, I had ordered the the chart for Casco Bay. I had everything plotted. I had it on a separate piece of paper. All the mark, you know, all the distances, uh, the the compass headings, what I was looking for, and that's how we followed it out. How I missed that turn off after Yarmouth Island. I'm still not sure, but it, we still got there, and that was a thing. And it was a beautiful day to paddle anyway. So, uh, you know. Use this as a lesson. Uh, if you don't have the skills to be out there in water like that, uh, don't 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 try to attempt this in, until you build up to those skills. Uh, I keep hating to hear about you know the Coast Guard reporting they found empty kayaks and they can't find the people. You know, the other thing that John and I both have is you can get it from the Coast Guard Auxiliary. It's a small boat sticker. Uh, you put your name and phone number on it and it sticks to the side of your kayak and if the coast guard finds it they'll call you to tell you they found your kayak floating if you don't answer they're going to start looking for you so uh he had one on his i have one on mine uh it's a great thing to have um it's a it's a good piece of safety gear for everybody out there so again your coast guard auxiliary is supposed to have these if not they can probably get them for you uh, John happened to got his at a Eastern Mountain Sports Store. Uh, I got mine directly from the Coast Guard Auxiliary. So, uh, you know, stay safe out there. Uh, I'm hoping to produce some more videos, go on more adventures. Uh, I, I, I stopped my video. Uh, if you look at them, I stopped the video when we were in about six, seven foot seas. I, I just, you know, I have four kids, and if anything really bad happened, I didn't want somebody uh, processing the worst part of it or, or the, you know, us hitting our demise and seeing that on video. So I, I stopped the video around six or seven feet. But the two videos you want to look for, um, you'll see John off to my left or right. He's got a blue and yellow kayak. Uh, I have two blue, blue bladed paddles sitting on top of my orange kayak under the bungees. Those are the two Casco Bay trip uh, videos you want to see. Um, so you can watch them, learn from them, uh, stay safe out there. And, uh, I'm hoping to do more videos. Uh, so, uh, happy kayaking everybody.